What's up, YouTubes? Welcome back to my channel, Richard on Data. My name is Richard, and this is the channel where we talk about data. So it's almost the end of the year now, and I'm beginning to wrap up and just close out some of my own personal projects before everybody leaves for the holiday break. So I wanted to share the things that are, in my opinion anyway, the absolute most egregious things that I've done in my career so far. And the idea is, whether you're in data science or you're in really any other field, you are going to learn new things every single month, and with that comes making mistakes. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that, as long as you're constantly getting better and learning from your mistakes and improving every time. So I do wanna share these things in the hope that you and your job learn from my failures and do not repeat these mistakes yourself. Now, before I get into these items, as always, I would ask that you guys smash the like button, leave a comment down below, and then hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Then hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. Mistake number one is not checking your work and your assumptions as you go. This is hands down the worst mistake that I've ever made. And this is the one that, at best, it could lead you to some really uncomfortable conversations with people. At worst, it will lead to the most horrible stress and worst work-related emails that you're ever gonna send. And the sad thing about it is, it's a lot easier to do than you might think. Now, the reason this is so easy to do is because literally every single line of code that you write carries with it some amount of assumptions. And that's true even if you're doing really basic stuff like joining or filtering or grouping. All of it almost has some kind of assumption associated with it. So what ends up happening is you'll have a big long piece of analysis, but it's easy to miss some mechanical details in the middle. So just to give some examples, maybe you have a binary variable and it's inverted somehow, so the one represents what you think the zero represents and vice versa. Maybe you're doing some kind of filtering and the schema isn't doing what you intended it to do. You could have conditional logic that's really complicated and has a lot of nests to it, and then something in the middle is off. Those are just some examples, but that's to illustrate the idea that these things can happen in the middle of your analysis and go completely overlooked unless you proactively try to catch them. So how do you prevent something like that from happening? Well, if you're like me, you're a super visual person, and it's really helpful to work in an integrated development environment like RStudio, where it's super easy to look and see your data. So every now and then, just visually inspect your data and make sure nothing looks off or really weird in it. It's also really helpful up front to list all of your assumptions, and then as you're doing your work, just go through and when you come up with something that to you represents a massive assumption, add it to that list. Something else you could do maybe is run summary stats on your most important variables. Just make sure everything is there. You don't have a lot of weird missing data. There's no values in there that you don't expect. Just basic inspections like that can save you a ton of time and a lot of stress in the long run. Something else that you could do is create a working list of diagnostics and tests that you run. That way you remember that you check these things and that way you're good to go. You can even share something like that with your client. If you do that, I can almost guarantee they will appreciate the quality of your work and your attention to detail. Mistake number two is not commenting code thoroughly. And I think this is something that a lot of you can relate to because nobody likes commenting their code. However, commenting your code is a super important thing to do. And the biggest reason for that is because you're often going to be working in a team and you're going to have to share your code with someone else. Maybe they're going to review it. Maybe they're going to add things to it. It could be for any reason but your code is generally some kind of byproduct of your own thought process. That's not necessarily something somebody else will be able to follow. So if things aren't commented, it's really easy for them to get confused and possibly frustrated trying to figure out why you did something a particular way or what you're doing in the first place. It's super important for your own benefit too. 
So data science projects evolve constantly, and it's not at all untypical for your client to hit you up two to three days later after you've turned something in and then ask you something or ask you to make some changes. It could be anything. And it's happened to me before where I've gotten lazy with my own commenting just because I wanted to get through something and I figure, well, I'll just comment all this at the end and then I forget to do the actual commenting. Then I go back to my own code two or three three or however many days later and I've forgotten why I did something or why I did something a particular way. So it'll save you a ton of time. Just comment as you go. It's not fun, but it will save you so much time in the long run. Now the third biggest mistake that I've made is not making analysis plans. Now this is when you get a task from your client that's bigger in nature and then you think, I don't need to make a plan for anything. I'm just going to start building crap. So this one could depend on your personality, at least to a certain extent. Me personally, I love building and creating and pushing things through to completion, but I don't necessarily enjoy the act of actually planning things. And the problem that you're gonna run into is that a data science project or analysis necessarily is going to have a lot of different steps to it, so it's super important to keep yourself organized. That's particularly true when you're dealing with large multi-dimensional types of data sets. There's absolutely nothing worse than making some headway on a project and then getting confused and forgetting what the next step is. It's inefficient and it costs you a lot of time. And it's something that you can prevent by just making a simple analysis plan up front. And it doesn't have to be something super complicated. Just maybe take your text editor, so it could be RStudio, PyCharm, Microsoft SQL Server, just whatever you're working in, literally list out the things that you're going to do in the order that you're going to do them before you start writing code. Just keeping your thoughts organized like that is really going to help you out and save you a ton of time. Mistake number four that I've made is over-promising and under-delivering. And now this one happens because by its very nature, data science tasks can be extremely difficult to estimate, particularly if it's someone else trying to estimate the amount of time it'll take you to do a particular task. It's super easy, particularly once you get really good at certain things, to get tasked with something and then you think, oh, this is super easy, all I have to do is clean this data set or apply this analysis that I've done before to some other data set, maybe change some names and some variables around, just simple stuff like that. You see it in your own head and think that it's going to take a lot less time than it actually does because I guarantee you what'll end up happening is something unanticipated or weird in your data will show up and then you have to spend time figuring out what's going on. As a general rule, which is true in almost any domain, you want to err on the side of under-promising and over-delivering as opposed to over-promising and under-delivering. Now I understand this can be a little tough to do, especially if you're new at a company and you want to build a reputation, because it really does look good when you're able to get a lot of quality work done really quickly, and I totally get that but you really want to make as reasonable as possible estimates of how long things are going to take. And that could look like, just as a general rule, assuming something will take twice as long as your first guess about how long it'll take. Your client will appreciate that in the long run, and it's a really good thing to do just for your own sanity and your own well-being. And finally, mistake number five is wasting way too much time trying to improve a model. Now, this is when you make a model and it's not performing as well as you'd hoped or expected, so you spend hours or days or weeks, sometimes even months, trying to make this thing better. Now, don't get me wrong, sometimes it is appropriate to invest a lot of time into a model, and it is critically important that you make sure you do all the aspects of model building in a way that's sound and makes sense, whether it's feature selection, pre-processing of your actual data, the sampling scheme you're using, tuning, all of that is super important. However, it is also really important to acknowledge when you might have hit a point of diminishing marginal returns. 
It'll often happen if you're just trying to get a model that's performing better, that all you need is better and more informative data. Having said that, it's also true sometimes your underlying data is crap. So maybe the way that a response variable was trained is not appropriate. And if your data is crap, the model that you build is going to be crap every single time too. So I do totally get that for a lot of people, this is the most exciting part of data science, but it's important to know when to step back and figure out what things could potentially lead to the biggest impact overall. And now one more thing that I wanna bring up, this is a contender for one of the worst things that you can do, but I'm not including it with all the others because it's not the fault of the data scientist alone, and that's solving the wrong problem in the first place. Now, this could happen because you're building a model that the client isn't interested in and is not going to use. It could be you're working in a team to build a product when there's no market interest in it. There are countless examples of it, but solving the wrong problem is ultimately the thing which is going to cost you the most time and it's going to have the biggest impact on your business. So just always keep that in mind. So all of these things are things that I have done in my data science career and then identified at some point down the road that they were mistakes. After the fact, I've tried to be conscientious about them in my future work, just learn from them and not repeat the exact same mistakes. That's really what's going to be important in the long run. And for me personally, it's been one of the biggest sources of growth that I've had in my career so far. So thanks for watching this. I hope you found it educational. Drop me a comment below to let me know if you've ever done any of these things or if there are any other glaring mistakes that you've made in your own work. Until next time, Richard on Data.